Some reptiles are so easy to take care of, you spend more time playing with them than actually servicing them. Not you. So today, let's go over the top five low maintenance, least time consuming reptiles. My name's Adam, this is Diamond, you're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles, stick around. Now, right off the bat, I'll say Diamond will help me host the first couple of these, but bearded dragons are not on the list. I'm talking about reptiles that you spend more time playing with, interacting with, taking pictures of, whatever it is you do with your reptiles for fun, you'll do that more than servicing them. Because to Diamond, all I am is just a salad maker, poop scooper, who brings him bugs. So anyway, let's get on with the list. A special thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring this list. Let's just start it off with number five, box turtles. Now this is a box turtle. I'm not gonna hold him for the entire thing because he kind of just shells up. He's very shy. This is Floyd. He's a very beautiful box turtle. I really like this guy, but um, box turtles are kind of shy. Sometimes, not always. Originally on this list, I was going to use a tortoise, but there's just so many of them and box turtles are all more similar than tortoises are. For example, a three toed is more similar to an ornate than a cherry head tortoise is to a sulcutta. You know what I mean? So let's keep it kind of specific here and go over why box turtles are so great. And when I say box turtles, it could mean ornate, three toed, Eastern, whatever. These guys are from North America. They're very easy to find for most parts of the world, not just on this side of the pond, but everywhere else as well, except for Australia. Sorry guys. Their diet is relatively simple. It is kind of varied, but at the end of the day, my go-to with him is I use box turtle pellets and I use insects. I throw them into a bowl and I walk away. And then I come back to watch him eat because it's super duper cute. It's actually hilarious because they've got these kind of like beaky things on their face. So watching them eat is a little bit more unique than a lot of other species of animals. And I don't know, part of animals that I like is the cuteness of it. Like maybe that's kind of silly, but why is my light flickering like that? But I, I like cute animals and Floyd to me is absolutely adorable. Now in terms of size, because box turtles don't get that big, I think they need a bigger space than most other species that are similar size. For example, a bearded dragon, like this is bigger than this, but this has a bigger container than this. I put this guy in a stock tank, basically. It's two by six foot. So I think that they just need more room to roam. That's what box turtles do in the wild. They'll roam vast spaces. So they just need more room if you want to give them a naturalistic environment. Where with diamond, I can supplement maybe the smaller space, which is still pretty good, two foot by four foot for him, with some height because they're arboreal. Whereas this little guy here, I promise you is not climbing anything. So to not drag this out, what do you need for a box turtle? I can do a care guide if you want, leave a comment, hit a like, and I'll do it if you want. But basically change the lights every six months. If your basketball burns out, change it. If your UVB's been six months or a year, whatever the manufacturer says, change it. Feed them every other day, every fourth day, whatever your protocol, again, we should do a care guide so we can go more into that. And keep the water fresh. That's basically it besides scooping poop, which you have to do with everything. But you can make these guys bioactive because they do like a degree of humidity that facilitates that really well. Overall, box turtles are pretty easy. Next on the list, we'll go to number four and we're gonna go cave geckos for, I know that we talk about them kind of a lot. I love cave geckos. They are very similar to leopard geckos and to African fat tail geckos or even banded geckos, but I think that they're just more unique. So easily on this list, if you're thinking, well, I'd just rather a leopard gecko, does it fit? Yes, leopard geckos fit and so do African fat tails. There's a whole video right here about the difference between the two if you're interested, but cave geckos are just the emo version of other geckos, I think. Imagine Brendan Urie turned into a gecko it would be these guys. And in comparison to leopard geckos and African fat tail geckos, I mean, panic at the gecko it is actually would make sense because they aren't as handleable as those two, unless you put in the work. So yes, cave geckos can be handleable and they're not always skittish, but with a leopard gecko, a lot of the time in my experience, I've bred over a hundred of them. Uh, they just come out of the egg like, hey, what's up? Can we just hang out now? Whereas a cave gecko, it takes more work to get them to that type of stage. But okay, so why did I pick them over other geckos? They want a 
cool. So you don't really need much of a heat source at all. And because they are completely nocturnal, in my experience anyway, you don't really need any special lighting. So you don't have to worry about UVB, although you can provide it, right? I'm not saying don't, give them a shade dweller if you want. Uh, you don't have to worry about a basking light, basically. You can do under tank heat, which is totally fine for these guys. Or if you want a naturalistic, you can do that too. Deep heat projection, whatever. Okay, just care guide right here. Let's not get too much into it. The gist of these guys is keep their substrate clean, which you can do with a cleanup crew, bioactive. Where are you going? And maybe once a week going in there and scooping poop manually, of course. These guys can be cohabbed pretty well. I'm not saying that just throw a bunch together, but do your research and it is possible, of course. And then with these guys too, they want it kind of humid. So just cover most of the top of the tank. In my experience, keeping humidity where it needs to be with these guys is really easy. With these guys, in my opinion, they're just super simple and more unique than a lot of other terrestrial geckos with eyelids that look very similar. Before we move on, I wanna let you know about today's sponsor, NordVPN. This is a company I actually use and love. This is a virtual private network that not only encrypts, but protects your internet browsing. So you're protected from snooping. All of your internet traffic is routed through a remote server. Basically what this means is your internet company, if they throttle you after a certain amount of bandwidth used, they can't do that anymore. And this is the fastest VPN that is available. I've tried a bunch of them, this is the best one. And sometimes I don't want people seeing my browser history. I have to look up very weird things about reptiles and I don't wanna be on a watch list. So NordVPN, thanks for that. If you're not concerned about snooping or your privacy, what about just kind of like saving money or having access to things you're not supposed to? For example, here in Canada, we've got the office on Netflix still. You can change your virtual location with NordVPN so you can watch whatever you want. If you'd like to give NordVPN a try, go to this link right here or the one in the comment section or description below. If you'd like to try it out right now for a two year plan, you get four months for free, and after that, a giant discount. Thank you NordVPN for sponsoring today's video, and let's get back to the list. Moving on to number three, we'll ruin the list with an amphibian, because that's what we do around here, White's Tree Frogs. White's Tree Frogs, you like how I like did this, and I should have said it, but I forgot what I was gonna say, because originally, I wanted to put Spadefoot Toads on the list, but we just talked about them. In my opinion, those are the easiest toads ever. Throw them into a bin, don't open it for six months. As long as you have colonies of insects, you're good. But let's just talk about something a little bit more popular. White's tree frogs, otherwise known as Dumpy's tree frogs or Australian tree frogs. Now you can always add a misting system, which is what I recommend, or be diligent and mist the enclosure. Now, if you're wondering, one of the, like this one, right, this small one, it, that's a white's tree frog that's behind me. The reason that I like them so much is because they're not super shy. So they will come out during the day at night. They're kind of like, I don't know, self-employed people who wear pajamas all the time and just kind of don't have hours. They just kind of are up sometimes and other times they're not, or in my experience from what I see. Now this is my white tree frog muck. This is a great animal. I like interacting with them. They do this funny thing where they'll try to like bite your fingers. It doesn't hurt. They just think everything is food and giving them something that's a larger prey item because they are a larger frog, like a hornworm, is hilarious. They bite into it, it squirts everywhere. I like feeding them. I like interacting with them. And with frogs, I don't recommend you hold them with your bare hands because they're amphibians. They can take in things through their skin, like oils and detergents that might be on your hands. They seem to be a little bit less susceptible to uh, taking in toxins through their skin. So again, I'm not saying throw caution to the wind or anything. I just think that these guys are a little bit safer to handle when necessary, like cleaning a tank. And again, these guys don't need any special lighting. Throw in some insects, that's basically what they eat. Wham, bam, Bob's your uncle, Fran's your aunt, get out of there and have a great time. You're gonna spend more time admiring this animal than you will actually cleaning up for it. Now, number two is actually a venomous species. Kind of. It's a Western hognose snake. They're not actually super venomous. They're rear fang venomous. Now I say this just to like build anticipation for you, but they're not actually dangerous. They're, they're not, they kind of try to pretend like they're cobras, but they're not. If you were an OG subscriber to Wiccans Wicked Reptiles, if you were around in 2019 or early 2020, all I talked about were hognose snakes. It was the first snake I ever got. This is a two foot animal, maybe three foot if you get a monster. We're talking about Western. So Plains hognose, dusty, Mexican. You're basically getting a Plains, that's the most common. 
and they're kind of simple to take care of, which is why they're on the list, obviously. They like it a little bit drier than most other species of snakes, or a lot of other species anyway. They like it drier for sure than, say, a tricolor, and they are easily found. They're from North America, they're bred a lot, there is a high demand for them, so they're not the cheapest thing in the world. Like, even a normal, you might be spending 200 bucks on, you know what I mean? But you can find them for a reasonable price too. They've got a very cool keeled scale, and they've got an upturned snout, which they use for burrowing. So you can use a very simple type of aspen substrate or coconut chipped type of substrate or something like that if you wanted to, and it encourages digging behavior. That's what I do with mine. As far as why they're easy, well, simply you throw in a mouse, they will take it. You don't even have to put it on the tongs. They're very good eaters most of the time. They'll eat it. You do this once every week or 10 days, depending on your feeding cycle. Some animals do better on 10 days, some do better on seven. And then because they eat once, generally they will poop once a week, and then you pick that up and that's it. I would say because UVB is a big thing and people give it to snakes now more than they used to, if there was a snake that benefited from UVB, I think it is hognose snakes. They are an animal that do spend a lot of their time well, they're diurnal, so they're gonna be out in the sun during the day. I've tried offering UVB to my hognose snakes. I didn't really notice a difference, but I think that a lot of people are doing it, and I think it's a really great idea. And I think also, this, they're very unique in the way that they look, in the way that they act. They don't constrict their prey like a lot of other species. Like if you get a corn snake, or a king snake, or a boa, or a ball python, they're all gonna, you know, kind of grab and constrict. These guys just kind of like bite and then just kind of chew, they're, it's kind of funny to watch them. They're super derpy, they're super cute, there's a bunch of different morphs that you can have, and they are so easy. And because they're small, they're not super destructive. They might be destructive to live plants because they're burrowing, but they're not gonna be destructive enough to like, for example, I've boas or ball pythons, they can move things around because they're heavy bodied. These guys are not heavy bodied, so you don't have to worry about that. We haven't done a hog nose care guide in a while, should we do a new one? Should we? Okay, and number one, well, you're not number one. Let's actually get number one out. Number one, low maintenance, easiest. You're gonna barely spend any time taking care of them, reptile. It's a crested gecko, obviously. Now, I love crested geckos. They're amazing. They feel so weird. Their little feet are like feet, paws, foots, footsies. Their footsies are kind of like, they feel soft because they've got these very unique type of feet that allow them to kind of suction up walls, up glass, things like that. So you're going to have a very unique feeling when they walk on you. I actually love uh, crested geckos. I think they're awesome. I don't really trust them to be on my shoulder because these guys do leap. They're leaping lemurs and you have to be very careful because they will just yeet themselves, like they're looking, the microphone's right here. I know you can't see it, but you can hear it. That's what this guy wants right now. Now this is actually a female and they do kind of, the one thing I don't like about them is that they lose their tails and don't grow them back. And it's not even like I don't like it. I don't actually care that much because it doesn't matter to me the way that they look. Are you, is that where you're gonna go? Is that where you're, okay, you have to be in camera. We'll do it later. We'll take some B-roll of you. What do you think? Okay. But overall, I think that they're super unique. They're very simple to take care of just because you put them in something like um, an 18 by 18 by 24 type of glass front opening enclosure. And that's big enough for one of these or even a pair, some would say. And uh, well, that's basically it. You keep it moist because they do kind of want it a little bit more humid. Why do I keep saying moist instead of humid? It's gross. Speaking moist. In my experience, it's best to keep them between 60, 70% humidity, which is pretty high. And then at night, naturally, it's gonna go up to about 80, which is what most people recommend. But you don't have to worry about kind of doing a lot of work. Give them a misting system, make sure that they have a very nice substrate that is kind of bioactive. That's what I recommend anyway. I mist these guys twice a day. I do it by hand because I do this whole room twice a day. And if I miss a day, I will get a notification because I use a type of thermostat that gives me a notification if it goes below 50% humidity. I have never once, not once, gotten one of those notifications and once I left for three days to go to snake discovery. So these guys are very simple to take care of. They're very rewarding. They come in all different colors and they, honestly, I, 
I can't say enough good things about them. I don't talk about them nearly enough. This guy was super skittish to get out of the enclosure and now look at him. Just a fantastic lizard. And let's talk about the diet real quick before we sign off here. That's probably the easiest part. How did I almost forget it? They eat a powder diet supplemented with insects. So once a week, I'll feed crickets of an appropriate size. She can eat large crickets and then I'll feed them Rapashi or Pangea or Clarks or whatever. I'm feeding the diet that has insects blended into it just because it helps them put on a little bit of weight and she's in breeding season right now. I do breed these guys. We've got one baby so far. So I think that uh, these guys definitely have to be it. Are you gonna jump to like really close it out? That'd be cool, but don't miss, don't hurt yourself. On this channel, you're gonna start seeing more bioactive builds. You can see the ones behind me that I did. I didn't film the really cool Chihuahua one. I'm gonna start filming them and these guys are going to get one. So please, if you haven't already, hit subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. You guys are what makes the world go round and round for Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles. Without you guys, there is no channel. I really appreciate it. Yoshi is now up here, which is the name of that crested gecko, by the way. So that's it. Those are your five low maintenance, easiest, whatever we call this video, reptiles. What do you think? Is there something on the list that doesn't belong? Is there a better option? Let me know in the comment section below. I really appreciate it. And as always, a special thank you. Please don't jump to the Patreon supporters. Without you guys, none of this is possible. You get extra videos, videos early. You know about the secret amphibian in my collection, which is a dream, herp of mine, anyway, and discounts on all sorts of stuff. For as little as a dollar a month, you can be a Patreon supporter. I'd really appreciate it, and uh, no, that's it. Because I do videos twice a week, that means I'll see you on Thursday.